What's up? I'm travel photographer Brendan Vanson of brendansadventures.com and I'm just outside the town of Zangyi at the Danzia with the Rainbow Mountains and this is Getting the Shot. Let's do it. So this is an episode of Getting the Shot and in this style of episode I take you through the process of getting an image from start to finish, from the process of scouting right to the editing at the end and here at the Rainbow Mountains it is colorful as you can see. If I got any shot that's anything like any of those I would be stoked about it. So we're here it's about 5.30, sunset's at about 8.30, we're going to do some scouting and then we're going to shoot right before sunset and just after sunset during the golden hour and hopefully we get some cool images. It's a colorful place. I've got my most colorful shirt on and I'm stoked about this. Let's go. Okay, so we're just up the hill and the sky is pretty bland. It's like really hazy and, and not great so far early in the evening. So I'm going to show you how to shoot a shot without using any sky and the best way to do that is to zoom in and focus on the details. So I found a cool winding road back there and I'm going to focus on that road and maybe add a little bit of a sky but just use that road to, to create some leading lines. Sorry I'm out of breath here. And maybe I'll shoot like F9 and that should give me enough depth of field to keep the whole thing in focus and then we'll take that image back and I'll show you how to process it. But first let's do some exploring and see if we see another image later in the day. So after seeing about a hundred different lines here, I like a lot of it. There's really cool shots. We've got soft light over there in the afternoon, which is exactly what we want. And I've actually decided I'm gonna do something different. And I see all this cracked earth in, uh, in the foreground. So I'm gonna use this as my anchor. I'm gonna anchor the, the landscape image, which is what you wanna do, and use these lines in the cracked earth to point right into that colorful mount. It's a completely different image than other people have done here, which is something I always want to do. I want to create something that's unique and my own. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try two different things. I'm going to shoot F11 and see how that comes out, which should put almost everything in focus. And I'm going to shoot F3.5, which should just leave the foreground in focus. The really important thing is put the focus at one third. Uh, let's shoot this. So I'm really happy with how I think that came out. Let's head home now that the sun's going down and they're kicking us out of this park and uh, see how this image turned out. I'll run you through the editing process as well. Okay, so I'm back in the digital darkroom, which is actually a hotel this time rather than the usual hostels. I'm living large for today. Um, but yeah, before I get to the edits, I want to urge you to head over to brendansadventures.com. Scroll down to the sidebar here and you'll see this banner. Sign up for the newsletter there for my newsletter and you'll get a free subscription to my travel magazine, Vagabundo Magazine. It's worth it. There's lots of cool stuff. I promise you. Anyways, let's get over to the edits from Danzia from the Rainbow Mountains. You can see these are all my images from yesterday. This cool road I showed you. This is one of the images I was going to show you how to edit. But the thing with it is the edit's really simple. It's just I, all I did was add contrast, really. I brought out the contrast to bring out the, the details and the color change. It, it was a bit orange here. So I, I'm not a huge fan of the image, but that road is so cool. So I'm going to show you how to edit the, the other images at the end of the night when the light was way better. Um, but I'll just buzz through these images quick. You can see the Danzia Mountains are cool, and this road was awesome, this curvy road. Uh, yeah, we're getting into some really colorful sections here as the light's going a little bit softer on us. Let me make that a bit bigger. There we go. Make myself a little smaller. Yeah, so the light in, in the early afternoon was actually great. Uh, a lot of guys wait right until just before sunset to shoot. And that's usually what I do too, but we're so far north here in China right now that the light was nice and soft no matter what time of day really, uh, you know, just outside of noon. So this was all like six in the evening, but two and a half hours before sunset, 
and the light was good, nice and soft, even light. And it wasn't perfect, but it was really close to perfect. You can see this is the cracked earth stuff. Uh, I come back and shoot this again once the sun's down even more to get it even uh, even more cool with more color. Uh, but yeah, just buzzing through the images. This is the light going down now. You can start to see the the cool sh shadows and contrast in this in this mountain range, the Danzia Mountains, which were unreal. Check out all that color. Just really, really badass place. I really enjoyed it. And look at that. That's just, I mean, I didn't even edit this this hard. I just, you know, added a little bit of vibrance and a little bit of blacks. And I've got all this color. It's just amazing place. If you get up to Zhang, to Zhang Yi, China, you have to go there. Look at this stuff. And that's easy to shoot. Really nice afternoon light. Anyways. Let's get down to these images that I'm going to show you how to edit that I promised you. Um, just after the sun has gone down, you can see in this image the sun's right on the horizon, which is why you get this all these casted shadows, which looks cool sometimes. And just after the sun goes down is when you get the really, really, really soft light. light. So this is the image, the first image I'll show you how to edit. And this is one of my favorites. Uh, I talk all the time about needing an anchor in your landscape shots. I use this line as my anchor and it leads into the image. And you've got all these leading lines here, so it's really cool. Um, but this is the edit. Before it's edited, you hit reset and you'll see what it looks like. You can see the, t the colors are really muted and it's in a shadow. So what we do first is we're using gradient filters to bring that out. Now, Normally I use a filter actually on my camera, but I was being lazy to be honest out there and it wasn't really, really necessary, but you bring out the, the foreground a little bit just to give yourself some more light to work with. And then I'm going to do the opposite for the sky and I'm actually going to just bring the exposure down just a touch like that. And so now we have a you know, a more properly distributed light in the image. We've got a nice clean foreground and a nice dark sky with nothing too dark and nothing too bright. And then we come down here and I like to move the whites on this type of landscape just because it kind of brightens things up again. It makes things look a little less dull. You don't want to go too far, maybe like 45. And I'm going to bring back the blacks because that brings out the color and the contrast you can see it's already coming out and then again a little bit more contrast and then you hit vibrance and it brings out all the colors in the mountain now I think it's also important this type of image to really not saturate too much but bring out the contrast in saturations so you want to bring the you want to make things look a little bit more red and more yellow rather than this muted orange color and I'm going to do that just by bringing out the saturation in those colors and then going over to the hue and the orange you see if I move it all the way here it looks greenish if I move it all over there it looks purplish you just touch it over and it's a little bit more red rather than orange and it just it makes more of a contrast between these colors and then I'm going to do the opposite for the yellow if I go over here it looks orange and it's the exact same color I go there and it's bright yellow just bring it somewhere like that and you've got this nice contrast between the oranges and the yellows and we basically have our image. I want to bring out the sky just a bit more. And yeah, that's it. So one minute, two minute edit at the most uh, with these types of images. Now one thing I want to kind of point out is that usually I avoid uh, the horizon on the center. But this image, it kind of works because you've got all these leading lines pointing right to the center. Like this. Everything leads to here. So it, it kind of works. If I was to drop that down to two thirds. It also looks really cool and some might prefer that and I'll probably pro end up exporting both of those files just to have it. But I kind of like how the sky comes out here as well. So yeah, like I said, sometimes you just process both images so you have both. Uh, let's move on to the, to the second image. This is the Cracked Earth image. And what you see here is you remember I was talking about shooting one image F9 and one F3.5. Um, 3.5 what I did with this image later in the day is I actually shot in between that I, this was shot at 6.3 and the reason I did that is I thought 3.5 blurred the background too much and 9 um, didn't blur it enough so I really wanted to focus on the, the the foreground here 
And I actually haven't edited this, so you don't see anything done. But there's a, I just hit vibrant, so so I'll hit reset just to bring it all back. And then to edit it again, the first thing you do is you hit your um, horizon straight, and then we're gonna mess with our exposure again, just to bring out the the light, and then bring down the light in the sky. And then I'm going to actually use a gradient here, again a different gradient, just to make this all contrasty, and also bring out just bring out this cracked earth. And so I do that using contrast clarity, and I'm actually going to drop the shadows a bit as well, just to bring out all of the blacks that you can. And now in this, I'm also going to drop the blacks a bit and increase the whites just a bit to brighten the whole image and I'm also going to increase the highlights and the vibrance and yeah that's about it that's that's what I was going for I was going for these cracked earth leading lines up into the color I didn't get nearly enough of the color uh, in here in the background as I would have liked but the focus on the cracked earth really came out cool and yeah, so we add our final touches. I'm going to do the same thing I did to the last image just by messing with um, the oranges to make it a little bit more red and the yellows to make it a little bit more yellow. And that's that's it. Those are our two final images uh, shot at Danzia Rainbow Mountains. And it's a really simple process if you're shooting at the right time of day. The mistake that so many people make is that they shoot in the middle of the day. So the lesson to be learned today of shooting landscapes is you have to be there in the late afternoon or early morning, preferably right around sunrise or before sunrise and right after sunset or right at sunset. So you get cool images of cool places if you're there at the right time of the day. Uh, the day. If you're at a place like Danzia in the middle of the day, and you want cool photos, it's probably pointless to even take out your camera. You know, you're not going to get that color, that contrast, and that light. You need to be there at the right time of day. Anyways, that's it for me on the show today. Uh, I'm off to a couple cool places next, and soon I'll be in Mongolia, which is really cool. So I hope you stick around. I hope you subscribe to this channel so that you get to see these cool places we're heading. There's lots of on-location stuff, maybe some travel photography critiques, and some more getting the shot information coming your way. I'll catch you next time. So after seeing about a hundred different lines here, I like a lot of it. There's really cool shots. We've got soft light over there in the afternoon, which is exactly what we want. And I've actually decided I'm gonna do something different. And I see all this cracked earth in, uh, in the foreground. So I'm gonna use this as my anchor. I'm gonna anchor the, the landscape image, which is what you wanna do, and use these lines in the cracked earth to point right into that colorful mount. It's a completely different image than other people have done here, which is something I always wanna do. I wanna create something that's unique and my own. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try two different things. I'm gonna shoot F11 and see how that comes out, which should put almost everything in focus. And I'm gonna shoot F3.5, which should just leave the foreground in focus. The really important thing is put the focus at one third. Uh, let's shoot this. Yesterday, this cool road I showed you, this is one of the images I was gonna show you how to edit, but the thing with it is the edit's really simple. It's just, I, all I did was add contrast, really. I brought out the contrast to bring out the, the details and the color change. It, it was a bit orange here. So I, I'm not a huge fan of the image, but that road is so cool. So I'm gonna show you how to edit the, the other images at the end of the night when the light was way better. Um, but I'll just buzz through these images quick. You can see the Danzia Mountains are cool and this road was awesome, this curvy road. Uh, yeah, we're getting into some really colorful sections here as the light's going a little bit softer on us. Let me make that a bit bigger. There we go. Make myself a little smaller. Yeah, so the light in, in the early afternoon was actually...
Okay, so we're just up the hill and the sky is pretty bland. It's like really hazy and, and not great so far early in the evening. So I'm gonna show you how to shoot a shot without using any sky. And the best way to do that is to zoom in and focus on the details. So I found a cool winding road back there and I'm gonna focus on that road and maybe add a little bit of a sky, but just use that road to, to create some leading lines. Sorry, I'm out of breath here. And maybe I'll shoot like F9 and that should give me enough depth of field to keep the whole thing in focus. And then we'll take that image back and I'll show you how to process it. But first, let's do some exploring and see if we see another image later in the day. So I'm really happy with how I think that came out. Let's head home now that the sun's going down and they're kicking us out of this park and uh, see how this image turned out. I'll run you through the editing process as well. Okay, so I'm back in the digital darkroom, which is actually a hotel this time rather than the usual hostels. I'm living large for today. Um, but yeah, before I get to the edits, I wanna urge you to head over to brendansadventures.com. Scroll down to the sidebar here and you'll see this banner. Sign up for the newsletter there for my newsletter and you'll get a free subscription to my travel magazine, Vagabundo Magazine. It's worth it. There's lots of cool stuff. I promise you. Anyways, let's get over to the edits from Danzia from the Rainbow Mountains. You can see these are all my images from yes. What's up? I'm travel photographer Brendan Vanson of brendansadventures.com and I'm just outside the town of Zangyi at the Danzia or the Rainbow Mountains and this is getting the shot. Let's do it. So this is an episode of Getting the Shot, and in this style of episode, I take you through the process of getting an image from start to finish, from the process of scouting, right to the editing at the end. And here at the Rainbow Mountains, it is colorful, as you can see. If I got any shot that's anything like any of those, I would be stoked about it. So we're here, it's about 5.30, sunset's at about 8.30. We're gonna do some scouting, and then we're gonna shoot right before sunset and just after sunset during the golden hour, and hopefully we get some cool images it's a colorful place. I've got my most colorful shirt on and I'm stoked about this. Let's go.